All right, welcome to the next part of the Final Cut Pro tutorial. So today what we're going to be doing is laying down the uh, body of the timeline with the content. And remember, you've got to think of what is the first thing that you would put down on a timeline. If it was a music video, it would be the audio track. If it's a sequential scene um, with POVs, you'd pop down the video clips in sequential order. In this case, it's an interview with a guy named Rob and that's this guy if it were just this recording this is how unentertaining it would be if you look at the lindy hop you see a couple just moving they're constantly moving they're always on the go they go around a circle mostly clockwise sometimes reverse there's a lot of stops a lot of spins a lot of boogie woogie steps you use your whole body, so you kick, you use your arms, you use your hips, you use everything in your body to accentuate what you hear in the music. So without B-roll to accompany that, it's a very flat and dry presentation. However, if you were to bring that down to the timeline, place your playhead at the beginning, expand your timeline to full view of that particular clip, this is what we're going to be working with. It's approximately 25 seconds of a video clip of Rob. You can expand it and make it larger so you can see the audio waves. In fact, you can change these boxes right here to expand the audio waves and see the spikes. In fact, that's also going to be an easy way to edit this particular clip and find the spots where we want to take our B-roll and place it. So, as I've worked with the expansion width-wise and height-wise of the clips and then also the audio form options, I want to show you the tools. We have a select tool a position tool and a blade tool that we'll use predominantly. These are the shortcuts, the P, the A, the B key. And again, on my keyboard to expand and move around, J, K, and L is my fast forward and rewind keys and pause key. My space bars play pause. My arrows left and right are frame by frame backwards or frame by frame forwards. And then the arrows up and down will snap you to the beginning and ends of clips where things are cut. So, Next, what I need to do is figure out what type of B-roll I've got and where that might be positioned. So the B-roll clips are all right here. I got a Bloomies clip. Looks like I got a couple right at that point moving. They're constantly moving, always on the go. This guy, beginning of the clip's not in prime because I don't see him yet. And there he is in the prime, and there he is out of prime. So in the prime is a good place for the boogie-woogie steps for that shot. This is a great closing shot because it's got everybody dancing. This one, round and round, go round in a circle. A lot of stops, a lot of spins. Okay, a lot of stops, a lot of spins. That'll be a good spot for that piece. And then this guy, it's interesting, right at the beginning, he's doing what's called breaking the fourth wall. He's looking at us in the camera. So we're going to cut past that point and get these guys spinning around in a circle as well. So we've got some good B-roll that we're going to place down. We should figure out our timing. Let's play it on the timeline and see where the timing might be and use the M key for markers. If you look at the Lindy Hop, you see a couple just moving. They're constantly moving. They're always on the go. So when you look at the Lindy Hop, that beginning portion is where I need to have a space where I could put a lower thirds block at the beginning to establish who Rob is because people that are listening don't know that he's an, um, a dance instructor. And so we'd want to put down his full name and his position. So that'll happen at the beginning. If you look at the Lindy Hop. Now I always wait to the very end of a phrase right before the next phrase happens, frame by frame forward, making sure that my playhead is right at the point right before a phrase happens. I feel that that's the best place to pop in a B-roll clip because when the word gets said or when something happens, that's when a clip pops up. So I'm going to hit my M key and that gives me a purple marker right there. You see a, see a couple, couple just, just moving. moving. They're, They're constantly, constantly moving. moving. Boom. They're constantly moving. At the end of constantly moving, frame right before, that's where I'm going to hit the M key. So that's my mark in, mark out for my first clip. So the first clip that I established was this is a couple moving, constantly moving. So I'm going to grab and pull them down to the timeline. Snap them. <coughs> excuse me. little sneeze. Uh, snap them to the beginning. Now, what I need to do is on the B-roll, figure out when I see a couple. And I don't see them right away. 
I'm fast forwarding. I still see just the guy, just the guy, just the guy, just the guy. And there's where I see a couple. That's an awesome spot. So now that I have my playhead there, I need to make sure that snapping is on. This is the snapping button over here in the uh, upper right corner of the timeline. And remember, this is the browser, this is the canvas, and this is the timeline. I'll be making reference to that different at different times. So if the playhead is there and the snapping is on, if I grab the edge of the window of the beginning of the clip, I can snap it to the playhead. That's the cut that I want to make, and I'll pop that right onto the... Um, marker because the marker is also a snapping point so if i play that back for um recollection to see if it works well if you look at the lindy hop you'll see a couple just moving they're constantly moving they're boom looks good if i did something i didn't want to do i can always go up here to edit and undo the move and i can do that infinite amounts of times final cut remembers your moves so now that the marker has a marker at the end, I'm going to cut and trim the end of my clip and figure out what I'm going to play next. They're always on the go. They go around the circle, mostly clockwise, sometimes reverse. So I want a couple that's always on the go. That would be Johnny and Carrie. Let's grab their clip, pop it down here on the timeline. It snaps right to, uh, right to the marker. There we go. It was actually snapping on the end to the playhead right there. So you got to be careful. You don't want to leave any gaps between the clips. These are called butt edits. We're going to put a transitionary um, point between a clip later, but not right now. Let's play it and see what we got. They're constantly moving. They're always on the go. They go around the circle. All right. So we know at the beginning, Johnny and Carrie, he's looking at us. We got to cut away from that. So let's get past that point. Fast forward. And there he is. He's looking away. So let's trim that clip to that point and then snap it right up to that point of the marker and see what we got they're constantly moving they're always on the go they go around the circle mostly clockwise so they don't do mostly clockwise so the mostly clockwise part so we'll get let's push our playhead right to the beginning of mostly clockwise snap the end of the clip and listen to what they say next they go around the circle mostly clockwise sometimes reverse there's a lot of stops, a lot of spins, a lot of boogie woogie. So a lot of boogie woogie steps is going to be the boogie woogie guy. But all this in between is most definitely going to be the round and round folks. So I'm going to grab the entirety of the clip. If you see, you want to grab the entirety of the clip. And then we're going to do an edit in here. In fact, a really cool edit would be what I call a match frame edit. So we're going to match up where Rob says there's a lot of stops. Because there's a video portion on these dancers where he drops to the ground practically and that's the stop point so check it out there's a lot of stop okay that's where he says there's a lot of stops so let's let's find that place where he says there's a lot of stops it's reverse there's, there's a lot of stop. stops so the word stops i'm going to get right there to it i'm going to click on that clip rob dialogue clip and hit the m key and that will marker the rob dialogue clip now i want to marker the visual point of where the round and round guy stops so just watch don't listen watch the round and round clip and find where he stops totally to the ground stops a lot of spins a lot of boogie woogie steps right there so there he is i'm going to go backwards a bit there he is up in the air so now i'm going to go forwards one frame at a time forward 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 he's going down 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 and he's about ready to pop back up right about there that's where i'm going to click on the round and round clip hit the m key now I have a matching point. I want to match up these two frames. So I'm going to trim away <clears throat> the beginning of the round and round clip, snap the two markers that I have set, the one from Rob Dialog and the one for round and round, snapped. They snap together. And then I'm going to fill the gap at the beginning of round and round and check it out. Play it back a bit, see if the lot of stops matches up perfectly. Oh, they go around the circle mostly clockwise, sometimes reverse. There's a lot of stops, a lot of spins, a lot of boogie woogie steps. Awesome. So right before boogie woogie steps, I can see where the playhead stops right there. Right before boogie woogie steps, I'm gonna trim round and round, and I'm gonna bring in my boogie woogie step guy. That's Jeremy Solo. So we can grab the entirety of that clip, boop, and snap it down here on the timeline. And let's look at the Jeremy solo clip and just find the prime of it. This is where he gets into the spotlight and he's about ready. His legs are about ready to do the boogie woogie step right there. Let's click. I've snapped the beginning of that 
to that point. Let's snap it up to the grid and see if the boogie woogie matches up. When he says boogie woogie, I want to see his legs go boogie woogie. Here we go. There's a lot of stops, a lot of spins, a lot of boogie woogie steps. Boom, he's got that. And right before he says the next phrase, you move your whole body. That's where I'm going to stop the Jeremy Solo clip. And then Rob will start talking again. You use your whole body. So you kick, you use your arms. You use your right before he says you use your <laughs> whole body, that's where I want the last clip, the overhead clip to pop in. So I'm going to grab the entirety of the overhead clip. And drag that down to the timeline and snap it. Now, I want to go back to the Jeremy Solo piece because this is a good point for us to possibly use the transition, uh, a transition that looks like what it could be, um, what, what, what could be adaptable to the scene and shot. Like, let's look at this shot. A spins, a lot of boogie woogie steps. A lot of boogie woogie steps. So when he did the boogie woogie move, it looks like he's on a stage. If I put a transition and remember my trend, here's my filters boxes, by the way. So these are all filters. I don't need a filter right now. Later, I'm going to use keying for chroma keying. And certainly when you're color correcting, you want the color board. But right now, I'm going to use the transitions window. And that's this little um, sideways infinity. Now, remember, cross dissolve works on just about everything. I'm going to pop cross dissolve in there. And it automatically wants to put it on the beginning and end. I can click on the beginning one and get rid of that. And just check it on the end here. Let's see the cross dissolve. A lot of stops, a lot of spins, a lot of boogie woogie steps. Cross dissolve's cool. In fact, nine times out of ten, I would use that. I wouldn't use a lot of these other crazy transitions because then you start to look like a cheesy wedding DJ. Um, but some cool ones, like if there was a fire, the bloom is a really cool effect to burn one shot into the other shot. There's a lot Watch. of stops, a lot of spins, a lot of boogie woogie steps. It's a cool effect, but it's not going to work well for this. The regular bloom. A little less intense. Wait for the render line to go away. There's a lot of stops, a lot of spins, a lot of boogie woogie steps. So it's a big flash. But really what I'm after is like a center wipe. So it looks like a, there it is, center wipe. So that it looks like a curtain that opens up from the middle. So we'll grab that, pop it on there, play it back and check it. There's a lot of stops, a lot of spins, a lot of boogie woogie steps. And it looks good. It just moves a little slow, so I'll speed it up. Remember, you can stretch your transitions making them slower or speed them up by making them um, quicker than the default 30 frames or one second um, transition. So I'm doing it about close to two thirds. Stops, a lot of spins, a lot of boogie woogie steps. Like two thirds a second, looks really solid. All right, transitions are good. I'm gonna hide those back again. Remember your audio meter you can always add to the end, checking your audio Use levels, your body. making sure you're near zero decibel. Remember that's audio prime, you don't wanna clip you don't want to be too under, um, too far under the audio, but the audio is really nicely blended in here, and it was nicely recorded to begin with. So if I check the entirety of what we've got so far, this is what we've got. If you look at the Lindy Hop, and again, that's a place where I'll later place the lower thirds box of uh, establishing Rob Smith, the dance instructor. You see a couple just moving. They're constantly moving. And I see a couple moving, just constantly moving. moving. They're always on the go. They go around in a circle. They went round in a circle, perfect timing. Mostly clockwise, sometimes reverse. There's a lot of stops, a lot of spin. I love that lot of stops, it was perfect timing. Transition into boogie woogie guy. It's a lot of boogie woogie steps. You use your whole body. Now we do this part on purpose because we want to reestablish the talking head. So we want to make sure that Rob comes back into the picture so he doesn't just drift into the abyss of this particular project as just a talking head. We want to reestablish that this is the guy, the dance instructor, that's telling us all about this detail. And then it goes into a closing shot. So you kick, you use your arms, you use your hips, you use everything in your body to accentuate what you hear in the music. And then we've got some excess overhead clip at the end so that when we finally place a sound score down at the bottom and place the intro at the beginning, we have some area to cut away at a point that is a good outro point. So that is the demo for assembling the body. And this is cutting clips, overriding cutting clips over the talking head. And remember, it, anytime you put a clip over the talking head video clip, the audio will still come through, but the video gets hidden behind it. Looks really good. So we're ready to move on to the next steps.